gamekeepers work with nature. Sometimes it works in their favour, sometimes it messes with their minds. Here she goes. Sam! It's gone straight back behind me. This morning, Paul and his underkeeper Sam have their suspicions yep. that a muntjac has set up home in one of their pheasant pens. Top end, Sam. Yep. That's where it's clearest, isn't it? Do you think? Yeah, top left corner. Yeah. So if you, if we both go in the gate, if you work down this this side, do a loop back up. And come back up the feed road. Yeah, that's side. it. Yeah. Because I think that's where it's going to be up, the, up in that top, in that top, bit, yeah, yeah top yeah. left. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's go and have a look. Now, of course, a small deer isn't going to eat young poults, but munties and rabbits have the potential yeah. to be the woodland Uber Eats without the in. moped, delivering tasty morsels to the teeth outside the fence. Do you don't want anything in the pen at all when you are putting birds in? Because basically the first night, say you put a thousand birds in here, the first night you probably get 700 of them out of a thousand that sit on the floor. Of course, you get a rabbit go through them or a muntjac go through them. Bosh, all straight over top of the wire. And uh, Mr. Fox comes along and, and nails a load. So um, there shouldn't be any foxes in here. But we'll clear it out, push it out, and then we'll stick the fence on and that stop anything else going back in there, fingers crossed. They'll do damage to the fence, I suppose. They will smash, yeah, that's what happens. Well, when, the, when the birds get in there, they'll go through the birds and they get spooked and they'll go and hit the fence and push the fence up and push the pegs up and of course then it you know wire shorts out and then you've got fox in the pen so one of the nightmares of having pheasants and livestock <laughs> the odds are not in our favor high nettles a decent sized area and just a couple of guys walking it through could be too much yeah, yeah. or too little yeah a lot of cover in here i mean it's a bit of a needle in a haystack but once we once we get it if you get it down that if you hear it and it goes that way, give me a shout and then we'll pincer it down the bottom end. Oh, yeah. So yeah, like I say, as soon as we get a, a movement or a sound, we'll um, we'll try and catch it out. Pull, clocks, mm. one jack, there's definitely one in here. There's so definitely a squatter in here. A nightmare because they just live in here until you get the birds in, and then cause all the birds to be across all this cover, and they're coming from underneath one of these uh, branches and birds everywhere and go around in the morning with a plastic bag, pick up the dead birds outside the pen. This is our high stand, got the aim point, got a 6.5 Kriegmoor. Oh, it could be in Germany, it could be in Sweden. Yes, it could. about the beaters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously got an array of guns to bring out, um, but obviously this is a bit of a tool for the job really. You know, you've got a bit of a heavier calibre, bigger bullets, um, they're 130, 130 grain bullets. Um, which, you know, is a bit more cover, so it's overkill for a munchak really, but it's a little bit more cover, so it'll punch through the bit of cover if we have to. Obviously it's not going to be coming through and standing there, well I might do if we're lucky, um, standing there perfect, but it might be a bit of a, a moving shot, so hence the, the aim point on top, so it actually could be the perfect scenario. The noise from Sam, he's obviously trying to push it out, but also it's a constant reminder where he is for safety. So every, like, every 15 seconds he's got that rup rup, so I know exactly where he is. So I know the angles where I can shoot. Or he's got something stuck in his throat, I ain't sure which. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not a safe shot, but that would have been an ideal scenario there. Yeah, it's that doe. It's amazing how they just cleverly go round Sam. He didn't even know she was there. That's a challenge. Go in Sam. That'd have been alright, I reckon I would have been alright. Yeah. Need about a bit of so, young Sam, right behind us. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Right so. In front of us, sorry. No uh no chance for a safe one. Done quite well to move her, I think. What's that? Yeah. The 
back there. So, yeah. Loop in it. Clever. Clever, clever. Wow. I've brought this back through to the gateway and then uh, if not we'll get a couple of the a couple of the lads. Die. Clever. Clever, clever. Another couple of close calls and we break and await reinforcements. Paul decides to get in a practice shot. Easy. Hit the gong. Hit the gong. Hit the gong. Good to gong. Round two, and Scott turns up with his shotgun to walk with us. Yeah, so basically she runs circles around us, and uh, we got in Scott from next door, so we'll give it a go. It's starting to get a bit frustrating. After four circuits, we start to think about giving up. Wasn't quite clear enough. Wasn't quite clear enough. <laughs> Got him. Stop. Got him? Yeah. Fair shot. <laughs> God, definitely two eyes open and just go through the motions. God, I was going somewhere. Did you get on camera at all or not? I hope so. God, that was quite. That was a difficult shot through the trees and through the stinging nettles. Can I just say who heard him? Sam shouted he'd come in, <laughs> and my my main man here, the cameraman. That's good. Good shot. good shot, well done. Yeah, we put a bit of pressure on it, but um, it's actually quite funny because you said to me earlier on, how do you shoot it? One eye closed, two eyes open. And um, you can't aim at that sort of thing. Something coming through that speed, through all this cover, you've basically got to be natural with your rifle, go through, see the target, be confident, give it the lead you think or required. Pull the trigger. Yeah. Let's go have a look. Look at that for a shot there, look. It might be perfect. It might actually be pushed back on. <laughs> Did you think you missed with the first one? Um, yeah, I thought I missed with the first one, but um, well, I thought I'd just follow it up anyway. Didn't look like I did miss with the first one, actually. No, I had it smack on with the first one, I think. But obviously it's charged up. Um, charged up and uh, yeah, good blood trail. God, amazing how she took that. 6.5 Creedmoor and it's still got run on like that. You wouldn't believe it. Hell of a blood trail through there. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, perfect. Let's lay this up. All clear. Now, as you can see, smack on the money. Hmm. Smack on the money. How oh, that animal ran like that? You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't credit it, would you? Incredible. So, yep. Very pleased with that. Good one to get. Good one to take out. Old doe. Um, yeah, good job done. And, I'll be honest with you, <laughs> that aim point, Scott even said to me, Scott's a good shot, good shotgun shot. He said, how the hell are you going to shoot that running through this cover? I said, oh, I'll be right, just use the old aim point and swing through. And, um, yeah, I can honestly say I'm quite <laughs> chuffed with that shot. That was a difficult shot. That was a difficult shot. So, yeah, smack on the money. That Job done. So, yeah. Well Happy. Done.
What a result. While we were waiting for Scott, Paul and David had been filming a new series for Gerber on knife applications. So when it comes to cleaning our munchak, Paul is spoiled for choice. Right, so you've seen me well, like with the, the bigger knives before. Um, so we will basically do it with none of these. We'll give it a go just to prove that you can do it with any knife. One of the util utility knives, a little, little multi-tool knife. That's quite a big blade on that one. Um, what should we do it with this dinky little? Yeah, let's do it with a little, little baby pen knife. Okay, little folding knife. So uh, as you can see, half the size of the, the bigger knives. Sharp enough? Yeah, let's give it a go. Have you ever had to ad lib when you're out for getting a knife, or are you always carrying it? <laughs> well, I, yeah, I've forgotten, I've forgotten everything, even the rifle, David. So yeah, I have had to uh, mix it up a little bit. Sternum. Sternum. Okay. Do a quick clean. A bit of green that. Front end. Okay. Back in. It was never going to be easy, but incredibly, the pen Clean is carcass. a little more pheasant friendly than it was. All done with the, the baby Gerber. And having had no continental driven hunting for a while, there was a faint hint of it in Bedfordshire this afternoon. Right. 